Oh man. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud. I've got some packages here I've got to ship out. One is a signed hat because we did a test order for doing some uh, fulfillment stuff here at a different location. And then also got to ship out another small order that was also fulfilled here. And then I've got to ship something out to one of our giveaway winners that we just had recently. So I hope you guys are doing great. A um, lot of big stuff coming up, a lot of huge, uh, huge changes to things. And I'm gonna save a lot of the details for a later video until we get everything situated and like nailed down and certain. But I think it's going to really, really change the way that we do business and it's gonna really optimize it for you guys so that when you have the experience of ordering stuff from us getting our merch and wearing our merch and just you know supporting what we do we can give you guys the absolute best quality and highest standard of you know shipping and everything else that we can possibly offer it's very expensive to try to do what we're about to do but I think it's going to much 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 better off benefit you guys more than it has been currently because right now I know it's hard to understand but we do not fulfill our own products other than these like three things right here we have an on-demand service that like when we get an order print the shirts they make the keychains they make the decals and whatever and then they send it out to you order for order every order they make it and then they ship it and normally that's fine and it doesn't take very long. However, with all the previous crap that just happened, you know, with the whole, I call it the COVID scam because it really is like the scam of the century. But with all that crap, you know, really as bad as people are saying it's supposed to be or not, it causes issues when governors of states start putting huge restrictions on companies. And our fulfillment center was in Michigan. And Michigan has a horrible governor up there just completely screwing us over for like two months of half speed production. And now everything's just backed up and it's just been that way. I know it's not their fault, it's the state leaders and the way they handle things, it's, it's their fault. I want things to be in my own hands so that I can offer what I believe to be as the best service possible and not have to rely on somebody else to do it. We are going to get on the road here, but also do not forget that if you want to enter to win this SRT Hellcat plus $5,000 of cold hard cash, you can hit the link in the description at pdapparelco.com. Go check out the site, grab anything you want and get automatically entered to win. Well, I guess I gotta start the car first. Yeah, couldn't get the window down, but it sounds really good. So we're gonna get started here. I got a new, hopefully the right uh, lock cylinder, key lock cylinder for this truck. There's so much to do on this thing, guys, like I'm not even messing, but it's gonna be so worth it. I really believe it is. I think it's gonna be a really, really cool truck when it's done. I mean, just look at the sparkle in the paint. Oof, oof. Let me know where you guys suggest I call around to get a new windshield. I called a couple local places, and the couple that I called were like, uh, we don't make windshields for that year truck anymore. So I was like, oh, great. So we're going to get this thing fired up with its current key, and then uh, we're going to get this thing pulled around because there's a handful of things that we're going to do to it today. I'm so stoked to work on this truck in the shop right now, guys. So, so beyond stoked. So many things we're gonna do to it in such little time. Just stay tuned, enjoy the video, this is gonna be fun. And the truck really does fit in here pretty nicely. Um, like I said, if you pull them in kind of at a little bit of an angle, I didn't do too much of an angle, but a little bit of an angle, um, you got plenty of room to get wheels and tires on and stuff like that, which is actually gonna be the first thing that we do today. Come around here, go into the shed and find our wheels and tires. Now these wheels and tires, I actually bought them months ago. I mean, I've had these wheels and tires for about four months. I just never had the truck done and didn't want to put them on there until it was done. So here are the wheels and tires. Let's get them rolled into the shop here though so we can see them in the shade and I'll show you what we decided to go with. So what we've actually got here are some Pro Comp 16 by 10s, just a bullet hole style wheels. I believe they're the classic series. Got the Nitto Trail Grapplers, the MTs, 285-75R16s. Just a very simple classic setup is what I had in mind for this truck. I'm not saying we won't change it down the road, but at least for now, I feel like this would look 
very good on that truck. I do still have to put rear bumper on it, dash in it. I mean, just there's tons of stuff. You're just gonna have to watch the videos as we get to things. But today, I want to start by getting these on the truck, so at least the truck looks a little bit less mix match. I guess you could say. The truck's got different three different types of wheels on it. I think the two rear are the same, then the two fronts are different. Yeah, we're gonna get these swapped out and hopefully it looks good. I'm really looking forward to this. Now I'm actually not certain if these are gonna clear on the truck right now 100% or not, but I guess we'll find out. We'll see. it is a scorcher out here I'm telling you for me it's a scorcher when it's 95 it is way too hot for me the truck is complete with the wheel entire setup on complete as in like that part of the project today is complete we're gonna show you around this now that I got a little super dramatic clip of the truck we're gonna go show you around the truck and how it looks so here it is We've got the Pro Comp, I believe they're the Classic 3 Series. Classic something, that's all I know. <laughs> 285, 75 R16s. The wheels are 16 by 10s. I thought it would be like a nice classic, you know, old school look for this truck. I was getting kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of at the point now where for like the super boxy trucks like this, I'm not really a huge fan of the big deep dish wheels for them anymore. I used to think like throw big wide wheels and everything, but then after I threw like a more practical, cool classic setup on the red and white version, I've just really liked that look on these trucks more than anything. Well, pretty much since my dad put this setup on his truck, his first gen, um, I've just really fallen in love with how it looks. The body lines just, they just go with this really, really well. Can't get over how sparkly this paint is. It looks so stinking good. I don't know how much, but it might just touch a little bit on like more of a lock, but then again, it, it might not. I haven't locked it that much to find out. I've only uh, turned it about three quarters of a turn, you know, pulling it out towards that opening and then another three quarters back the other way to back it through here. But other than that, I haven't really locked it back and forth. But I would imagine it should mostly clear on this setup. I think my dad's version is pretty, I think it's factory ride height too. And he's got, I think, dang near similar setup on that truck. And I don't think it really rubs, but uh, I could be wrong. It, it, might, it might have a little bit of rubbing issue. But if it does, what do you guys think we should do suspension wise? Do you think we should just level the front out or just leave it with a little bit of nose dive like this? Let me know what you guys think. And in terms of interior, I'm so torn on what to do. I was reading through your guys' comments yesterday. A lot of people are saying, you know, go with the idea that I had, which is, you know, completely redo the seats and do leather and all that jazz. And then there were other people saying, don't do that. Swap in like a fourth gen seat setup or, you know, a second gen seat setup and leather wrap that. And then there were people giving all other different types of ideas and everything else. And to be honest with you guys, I, I am open to suggestions. I'm not completely dead set on one, one idea, um, but I just kind of gave you my idea based on what I thought would look good with the truck. Now, in terms of some of the comments I was seeing regarding a plastic trim, I was seeing some people saying, don't paint, don't paint, don't paint. But you guys have to realize the dash is going to be black. The dash is already painted and it is an actual dash plastic interior paint. It's not just some random paint we're just throwing on the dash. It's an actual dash plastic paint, and that's what we're using. And I was just gonna do the same thing for all the trims so that the trim wasn't like gray and it was actually black just like the dash and the door panels because of course that's what we're doing with the door panels as well is they're gonna be black and then with this more leather textured stuff here, it's gonna be leather dyed. So much stuff to happen to the truck yet. 
just unbelievable how much stuff we got to do with this truck. I do have a pile of parts in there to get started on it, but there's also just so much that I don't yet have that I'm going to have to order in to get this thing finished because there's just so many little parts that it needs. But the stuff that we don't have, it's really not that expensive. It's just a lot of little things. The most expensive thing is going to be the seats on the interior. That's going to be the thing that really cost some money. Now we are back in the barn in the interior of the truck and there's one thing that I'm, there's not just one thing I'm wanting to really get done in the interior, there's a lot of stuff I want to get done in the interior, but there's one thing in particular I'd like to get done, swapping out the ignition cylinder. Hopefully this is the one that we need and it works because I'm getting a little bit tired of having to jam the screwdriver in there, flip it around, start it up, whatever. No longer have to use a screwdriver. It's kind of like a little groove here and you gotta slide it in with this groove here. That is as long as it works. Once it's like mostly in there, you gotta actually put the key in, kind of wiggle it around a little bit. We can start it with the key now. So all this has already taken off all the covering because it's gone, we're gonna have to get new stuff. All I had to do was literally take the key out of this cylinder, slide it in there, then put the key in, kind of turn it forward, then rotate it backwards, and then it kind of locked itself into place. Now you can just pop the clutch in and then push the key in just a little bit. You know how they normally do that to release them. Rotate it forward. Starts right up. Well, everybody, that is where we're going to wrap up the video for today. I mean, we got a couple things done on the truck. We got wheels and tires on it, at least so it doesn't look like a total joke, even though the interior's still pretty bad. Got it to where now we can just turn a key and start the truck up, no more screwdriver. So there is progress happening. It was so hot though. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully everybody enjoyed this video. And also, quick announcement, 10X entries are back to win this truck, but they end on July 9th and the giveaway ends on July 15th. So if you want 10X entries, we did bring them back but only for a few days, then they're gonna be gone again. Go check out the store, check out all the new products, grab anything that you like off the store, and every $5 will now get you 10 entries towards winning this truck. You guys are awesome, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.